When Christmas morn is dawning, in faith I would repair unto the lowly manger my Savior lieth there. Unto the lowly manger my Savior lieth there. How kind, O oh loving Savior, to come from heaven above, from sin and evil save us, and keep us in thy love. From sin and evil save us, and keep us in thy love. Good morning and welcome to our worship. Merry Christmas on this beautiful Christmas morning. We're glad to have all those who join us in the sanctuary at our Redeemer Lutheran Church here in Jacksonville, Florida. A Jacksonville that is much colder than usual for those of you that are outside of town and maybe you would like to know. According to our thermostat, 28 this morning. And uh, yet a refreshing day to get up, get to church, and celebrate our Savior's birth. We want to also welcome all those who join us by live stream or are listening to the service over Our Redeemer Lutheran Radio. It is good to know that others uh, are also worshiping with us at this very time and in many distant places. As we begin our service on this Christmas morning, we rise to join in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful, as printed in the bulletin.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we light all the candles on the Advent wreath and the Christ candle as we celebrate the good news first announced in the fields outside of Bethlehem, Christ the Savior is born. It is good news we have to share with the world. The light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As you're able, I invite you to kneel or be seated for the confession of sin. Let us then confess our sins to God and ask His forgiveness. Almighty God, as we come to You, Savior, we confess to You that we are often guilty of bowing down instead to false gods of money, possessions, or popularity. Instead of serving others in love, we seek to serve ourselves. Instead of listening to Your Word, we listen to the tempting voices of the world around us. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins. God has had mercy on us. He sent His Son, whose birth we celebrate today, to be our Savior. Jesus, the Lamb of God, offered His life as a sacrifice for our sins. He rose from the dead to give us eternal life, and so I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. Let us rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, In all the busy excitement and worries of our Christmas celebrations, draw us near to the manger in Bethlehem. Lead us by your Spirit to worship with the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, and the quiet contemplation of Mary, the mother of our Lord. When our worship is done, help us to follow the example of the shepherds and share the good news of salvation and make known to others what has been told to us concerning this holy child, our Savior. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And we begin that confession of the good news to others as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We sing all three verses before the reading.
and they are there for you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The Bible is not here. Oh dear. Um, I guess I will see how good my glasses are. <laughs> okay. All right. Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 52, verses 7 through 10. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. The song Susan and I would like to share with you is called Stranger in the Straw. No waiting crowd in royal court Just sent a beast in dusty Trumpet fanfare greets his birth. Yet angels gather, yet angels gather, yet angels gather to rejoice. Stranger, stranger, little stranger in the straw. Oh. 
Let's rise for the gospel. The gospel for the nativity of our Lord, Christmas Day, is John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the, as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. For the sermon hymn, we're going to sing the first three verses as indicated, but then we're going to sing the fifth verse also, which is under hymn of response, which we're not doing as a hymn of response. So we will conclude with the stanza, My heart for very joy must sleep. Four verses. You may be seated as we sing. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Could you use some good news this morning? Today, all over the country, flights have been canceled, roads have been closed, many accidents because of dangerous wintry weather have happened. Es experts that have said that this may be the coldest Christmas in 40 years for some places. Well, at such times, as you know, travelers would love to have some good news, such as the plane just landed, we're finally here in time for Christmas, or we're safe, no one was hurt, the car, that's a different story. If you have tests or treatments scheduled this week with a doctor, you are also waiting and praying for good news, aren't you? The tests came back negative. The surgery was successful. The cancer is gone. 
We all need good news. And we just can't get enough of it. That may be the reason that so many people have said, I've stopped watching the news. Or I've started getting the news on my phone rather than watching it on television. Well, I have good news to share with you today. That's the theme of today's message. Good news. I bring you good news of great joy which shall be to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we have plenty of bad news that fills our lives. Bad news that comes across the uh, television screen or on the radio or that we greet every time we uh, go to look at our email on the computer. Yes, we're bombarded with bad news from all uh, over the place, including uh, our own family situations, our health concerns, the rising cost of absolutely everything. Yes, and we also have bad news if we look inside of ourselves and see only sin and, and guilt and too little strength. Well, we thank you, Lord, that today is all about good news, the good news that is greater than the bad, the good news of God that has come to earth and that we treasure in our hearts, as did Mary. We ask you, Lord, then, to bless us, not only that we might know and believe the good news of Jesus' birth and his promise to return, but also that you would use us to share that good news with others as your witnesses, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the March 2021 report from the Nielsen Company, a ratings company, indicated that uh, the most watched cable channels for the news were Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. But the thing also revealed that they all had double-digit declines in news viewers compared to a year earlier. In fact, Fox's share that year fell a massive 31% over the previous year. A survey of social media site LinkedIn, or it's a, you know, it's a, uh, one of those things that you can become a part of and then you can connect with other people. Well, LinkedIn, the survey, showed that hundreds of, uh, hundreds if not thousands of people, their members, had also given up watching news on a regular basis. Well, most of the comments indicated that people feel the news is bad for their mental health or that they can't trust those who deliver the news. In fact, a study published by the International Journal of Behavioral Medicine found adverse psychological effects on watching television news, and I quote, watching the news on television triggers persisting negative psychological feelings, and it goes on to say that an ad uh, ongoing adverse world event such as COVID-19 was seen as a significant trigger for negative feelings and anxiety. And so when you're hearing about it all day long on the television, it only increases your anxiety. Well, the Center for Disease Control, whether you can believe them or not, uh, also weighs in. It says that uh, uh, it's an extra stressful time for many people right now. The symptoms of stress uh, can include changes in sleep or eating patterns, worsening of mental health conditions, fear and worry about your health, and the health of loved ones, and difficulty concentrating. The constant stream of negative news, it said, compounds this stress. Well, there's something I think you can believe from the CDC. And then, research by the Digital Third Coast found that 68% of people said that the news had left them feeling anxious during the pandemic, and a similar number of people uh, have felt overwhelmed and burned out. Finally, psychologist Logan Jones says that media outlets often focus on disaster reporting 
as a way of keeping people addicted to the news cycle. End of quote. And so it's a cycle of negativity to keep us hooked to needing the news at the very same time that the news is causing us harm. Well, the news today might be bad in many cases, but the news 2,000 years ago was not so good either in the land of Israel. People were upset because they had to make a dangerous and in some cases expensive journey commanded by the Roman government which occupied the land. The Jews hated the Romans, and the reason that they had to make that journey was so that Rome could take more of their money through taxation. And so it was not a happy time. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. Well, it was good news when they found out that the child Jesus would be born. It was good news when they found out that Mary was carrying the very Son of God. But that being said, it was not really good news when she had to travel during her pregnancy, late term in her pregnancy. No one wants the government to tell you where to go or what to do, especially when you really shouldn't be traveling. No one likes to pay taxes. But that's the reason Mary and Joseph found themselves on the way to Bethlehem and that when, when they arrived there, it was time for her to deliver the child. Well, fortunately, in the midst of all of that, they had something entirely unexpected. They had the good news announced to them over the skies of Bethlehem, first announced to the shepherds, but the shepherds then, you remember what they did, they went to Bethlehem to see what they had been told about, and they shared the good news with Mary and Joseph that angels had been delivering the news that night. It was good news right when they all needed it. Centuries before Jesus was born, the people of Israel had received the good news, the promise that the Messiah would come, the first promise of his coming was given to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Gethsemane, I'm sorry, the Garden of uh, when, where they were created and placed in the Garden of Eden. And then that promise passed on to uh, uh, us through the prophets. The good news continued to be brought into the world by our God as he announced it through his prophets, his evangelists, and others who served him throughout biblical times. They needed the good news back then, and I would say, if anything, we probably need the good news even more today. But for the Jews in and around Jerusalem, it was especially uh, important to hear that good news. The city of Jerusalem had been overcome many times throughout its history by conquering armies, uh, and it was simply more than what the Jewish people could take that the Roman government was in charge. And yet God knows how to bring good news and he did in a powerful way that night. And as the Old Testament reading said uh, to us a few minutes ago, our God reigns. And that was the message of the first Christmas too, that through the gift of his Son, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, God was invading this world, and he truly does reign over all things, even now. Well, we may find ourselves wondering about that at times. Does God reign here in our world with all of the bad news that we hear about? We hear or see reports of war and conflict, terror and crime. We become entangled in disagreements and have angry arguments both in person and online these days too. People cannot seem to agree about anything in politics, oftentimes 
It's that way in religion. In our personal lives and in our families, we also see conflict, even at Christmas. Sometimes those conflicts are serious and separate people. Then, of course, there's the bad news of grief and loss. A loved one that's no longer with us, first Christmas without them, or the loss of a job, loss of income. We also know the inner conflicts that we don't share with anybody else, the struggles we have with sin, the guilt that we feel, the shame. And so, even as we come to celebrate Jesus' birth and acknowledge our belief that He is the King promised of old to Israel, we might still be asking ourselves, is God reigning? Is He reigning in our world? Is God really in control of my life? Is He going to do anything about all these problems and conflicts? Can this King help me? The answer is yes. He can. He does. He will. In fact, He already has. And it was announced by angels what He came to do. Namely, that Jesus was born to be the King. Born to be our Savior. That He is coming again. And until we see Him at last, He promises us that He's ruling and reigning over all things for the sake of the church, for His people. That means in a situation where you don't know how you can go on, how you can get through it, you don't know what to do, God is still in charge. You can trust Him. You can wait upon Him. You can look to His promises. The watching shepherds near Bethlehem heard the angel's announcement of the good news. For unto you, personally, to each of you, is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The angels brought that good news and announced that it was found in the baby Jesus, even as it had been announced prophetically that the virgin would conceive and bear a son, you shall call his name Jesus. The angel Gabriel told, told Joseph, you shall uh, name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. And so the shepherds left the fields, they left their sheep, they ran to Bethlehem, they peeked in the manger, and when they were welcomed to come in, there, eye to eye, face to face, they saw the proof that God reigned, and it was a little baby. The prophet Isaiah said, The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Now you see, the child in the stable grew up to do exactly that. To bear his holy arms, which would be outstretched on the cross as he was lifted up for the world to see, condemned and crucified to set us free. There on the cross he took all of our sins upon himself. He suffered and died with them. And by the resurrection, he was proved to be the Son of God in power and might, that the Father accepted the sacrifice for our sins, and by faith in him, we are forgiven. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Yes, Jesus' body, after the crucifixion, was taken down from the cross and wrapped. This time not in swaddling cloths, but rather wrapped in a linen shroud and sealed in a tomb. But that tomb could not hold the Son of God who burst forth in light and power and majesty on the third day. The evil powers of darkness, the devil, and death itself had done their worst to him, but were defeated. That means that whatever problems you may have today, whatever things you may fear, whatever bad news comes your way, the good news is stronger. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. And so before He left this world and ascended into heaven, Jesus announced to us all 
through the disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now if you need more assurance that God through His Son Jesus Christ is still reigning, guess what you need to do? If He wants to teach you all uh, that He has uh, said, where do you need to be? You need to be in the Word. You need to be in Bible class. You need to be in church regularly. If you sometimes wonder where is the Lord in the midst of all of this, guess where you need to be? You need to be where He promises to meet you through worship. The Word and Sacrament is given and the Lord meets us here in a very special way. Yes, dear friends, the message of Christmas is that the good news is greater than the bad. God reigns supreme through His Son, Jesus. You know anybody that needs good news? That's the good news that we have to share, that the world needs to hear. And Jesus is coming again one day, like the watchmen in Zion, like the shepherds of Bethlehem, we too will see the Lord eye to eye and face to face. So, turn off the news. Don't watch it all the time, hours on end. Rather, open up the Scriptures, come to church, celebrate the good news. Amen. Now, may the peace of God which surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. At this time, we receive the offering. During the offering, I'm going to play one more song on the harp. It's a medley of the beautiful carol, Mary Did You Know, but also with strains of I Wonder As I Wander in it from uh, the Appalachian Carol.
I wonder. On this Christmas uh, day, we want to remember all those for whom we have prayed in weeks past. They are listed for you in the bulletin. Um, I've also been asked to announce that uh, we have a card um, that we would like everyone to sign. It's in the narthex. Uh, please sign the car Christmas card for a friend in Oklahoma, Mrs. Ladine, who just needs some encouragement right now to know that others uh, are thinking about her at this time. Um, Obviously, on Christmas morning, the choirs are not singing, the bell choir is not ringing, and so I take a little bit more uh, liberties. I would never normally, on a Sunday morning, do all the music that I'm doing, but um, we, we uh, do it to God's glory and uh, appreciate the opportunity to share uh, in song. Um, following the service, those of you that have purchased poinsettias are free to take them home with you. To enjoy throughout the rest of the season. Uh, next Sunday morning, New Year's Day, we will not have Bible class either, but we will be um, having our worship service at 10 o'clock, the first worship of uh, 2023, and of course today is the last service for 2022. Uh, two weeks from today, when we resume, resume Bible class, we're going to have a um, new series called The History of Hymns, looking at seven eras of Christian music. I think it's going to be very good. It's a, a video based in the sense that there are videos for each of the lessons to talk about the history of hymns. And so mark your calendars, get up a little bit earlier, come for Bible class at 9 o'clock, and yes, we'll do some singing too. I think you will uh, gain new appreciation for the wonderful songs, hymns, and spiritual songs uh, of the Christian church. In the narthex this morning, there is a sample Bible that looks like this. There are also some commitment forms there. As I announced last night, through a Thrive in Action Team grant, we're able to give uh, 15 of these free 365-day Bibles to the first 15 people who not just request one, but sign the commitment form to read the Bible through, uh, through the new year. In other words, it's uh, divided into 365 readings that include the Old Testament, the New Testament, and either the Psalms or the Proverbs. So we're asking you to commit to reading. It's like maybe 20 minutes a day, a little bit more perhaps. Um, and in the course of the year, you will be through the entire Bible. If you get behind, yes, you can make it up. So that's the first thing, to agree to do it. And secondly, we're asking you to come to at least two of four talkback sessions, fellowship gatherings, where we're going to get together to talk about our readings, to answer questions, discuss things of importance, including uh, how you can study the scriptures. I think it will be well worth it. So far, we only have four committed. That means we've still got 11 uh, so this is your opportunity today. You'll find them in the narthex. Um, and I think those are all of the announcements. Be sure and check your mailboxes uh, to see if uh, you have cards and so on and so forth. And hello there. What are you doing? <laughs> all right. Merry Christmas. You know, back in October, we had an opportunity to show our appreciation to you as our pastor and the servant of this congregation. Today, out of love, Christ came to us here. So we celebrate his love for us 
And we, as a congregation, are celebrating our love for you. Well, thank you. It gives me appreciate. It gives me pleasure to present to you an offering of thanks and love from the congregation. And uh, I think there's more in here. Well, it already seems pretty thick. That's yeah, very gracious. There's, there's not. Well, wait a minute. Thank you very much. I, th I left the batteries down there, so I think that's it. Okay. God <laughs> bless you. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, Bill. I and thank you it. for all you do. It's my pleasure. It really is. And uh, thank you, everybody. We um, obviously love the church uh, family that w the Lord has given to us, and we welcome all our guests this morning, including one of our neighbors. So happy to have you here with us. And uh, thank you again to everyone for joining us also online. The other thing that I forgot to mention is this coming Friday, we have invited, Susan and I have invited the uh, church council, the elders, and I decided to invite anyone that is on a board or a team and their families to come for a supper at our house. It's at 6 o'clock this Friday, so no reason to cook. Uh, and uh, I think as I put in the bullet, if anyone else wants to come, I'm not going to say nay. But the only thing we ask is please let me know if you're coming. I do not have a sign-up sheet, and so far I've got two people said they're coming, so I would like to hear from the rest uh, that are planning to do so as we get ready to, uh, to uh, end this year and start a new year. Let's rise now as we join in prayer, in our closing prayers. Lord Jesus, you are the Word who was with God, the Word who is God, the Word made flesh for the sake of our salvation. Fill our hearts with confident joy and hope in the knowledge that our sins are forgiven and that we have the promise of eternal life in your presence. Help us by your Spirit to share with others the good news of your birth, life, death, and resurrection so that they too can rejoice with us knowing that our God reigns. We look forward to the day, dear Savior, when you will come again and you, we will see you eye to eye and face to face. At that time, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But for unbelievers, it will be too late. And so bless our witness uh, individually and as a congregation. This bad news world needs the good news of our Savior's birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his return. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing joy to the world.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.